So those get all bad to answer more goddamn questions. And we got fucking four paid scaroony questions. Two from yesterday, I didn't get two, and two for today. Two a day, goddamn it, minimum. Don't be shy, though, goddamn If we get up to five a day, that'd be even goddamn better. Anyways, first one is from Jean-Bernard Rothier. Sounds like French to me. Um, He sent fucking 20 bucks because he's got two goddamn questions. My kind of fucking homie. J-Dog, I have two questions. <clears throat> one, do you know if you're planning to reissue Urgehal? Let me know if I'm ever pronouncing that band right. The black metal band? U-R-G-E-H-A-H-A-L. Urgehal? Is that how you pronounce it? That's how I've always been saying it. But uh, Agonia Records has released their stuff, and we've carried it over the years. Seems like they started in the early 2000s. I remember when I first listened, that's when I first started seeing the stuff, probably around 05 or so. So I'm assuming they started around there. Early, very early 2000s. Uh, reissue Urgent Hall Massive Terrestrial Strike C on CD along with bonus tracks Nyax, which was on some early vinyl editions. So, to uh, answer that goddamn question real quick, um, no, I mean, we don't have any plans. I, I don't know what, what made you uh, think to ask about them. Like, are you asking, like, will we be interested? To be honest with you, I don't even remember what those guys sounded like. They just, I know I listened to them. Um, it was at the time when Agonia Records, when we first started trading with them, heard them around the same time I heard the, that Ed Dorier, uh, Infernal War, Anal Vomits. The first time I heard Satanic War Master, too. Um, it was the 10-inch with the goddamn uh, polar bear on it. it was loud, and I didn't do nothing about them. Like, it was this goddamn Satanic Grizzly Bears? And what the fuck's, I, I didn't like the cover. Um, whatever that 10-inch is called. That was, for, I was like, I liked the band name. And then I put it on, remember not liking it. And then most of the other stuff I heard too, my Satanic War Master, I didn't like. It wasn't until I said that the Karelian Satanist Mana song came out. It's like, oh, this is fucking great. And then everything after that I liked. And then I only went back once and I listened like maybe like Strength and Honor. It might have been that one. Or maybe the split with Clandestine Blaze. I was like, ah, oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was the split. Maybe it was the Black Metal Commando. It was another one, another earlier one. And I, I only went back to it once, not all of them. And I was like, yeah, still don't really like it. Nothing there. The band that I thought got better. Um, but Urgent Hall, I know I listened to uh, them back then, and I remember it doing nothing for me. And their image, at least they had a fucking image, unlike these other fucking bozos that we keep discussing every day. Their image just looked a little forced, and like, granted, they were trying something different, and I get it, work outside the box. The guy had like that fucking cage around his face and stuff. I, it just came off as a little, uh, eh. Band name, I can't, probably not even pronounce the goddamn thing right. Covers just screamed, let's be Dark Throne, Transylvanian Hunger. Um, so I was never too interested in them. And listen, to them, it, full disclosure, I might put them on tomorrow. I won't put them on tomorrow. But <laughs> I'm just saying if I went back and listened to them, now I'm like, this is fucking great. Like Infernal War. Went back, like, holy shit, these guys are fucking blazing good. Uh, if that's possible, mm, doubt it. What I'm, what I'm uh, picturing is, Kind of monotonous goddamn bullshit black metal. Just a rah, 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 rah. Um, Vulture Lord was another band around that time. Did, did it, uh, I think the Agonia did their LP, if I'm not mistaken. That was kind of that um, that style of black metal, too. That rah, 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 rah. I remember really liking that. I'm not really liking it, but I remember liking it. I, oh, I picked it up. I have it. I uh, remember that being around that time frame, too. I'm pretty sure it's Agonia, but it was, if it wasn't, it was around that same time frame when a lot of those bands I was completely unaware of i i learned about them through hell's you know we're really kind of like aggressively doing the distro because we're, we're talking around 2005 2000 yeah 2004 2005 2006 because we're officially now we're putting out releases uh for like a couple years now and we are trading with the goni and stuff and Funds were coming through a little bit more, so we're a little bit more aggressive on our wholesales as well. Uh, but, but I'm pretty sure Agonia we were trading with back then. It was always Chase setting up the wholesales and uh, trades. We might have been wholesaling it, but I want to say we were trading it. He, he would know right right off the top of his head. But I, to my memory, I just, <laughs> I just remember a lot of times we'd, we'd get it, though. It was like, fuck, we'd have to shift through. Cause I, every time this goddamn box came, it looked like a fucking elephant sat on it. So... You'd have to ship, and hopefully there was enough padding on the bottom. Make sure it didn't get damaged. Sometimes you get damaged ones, but okay, well, these ones are salvageable. Remember, I mean, some, sometimes kind of a fucking mess. 
But all those bands, that was my introduction to them. Like I didn't, I, it was it wasn't my teenage years getting into that stuff. So I was already starting to become more picky, I guess you could say, on those airs. So yeah, Urge Hall, I just remember putting on like they got they got the one fucking shot, one listen. Didn't do much for them. And granted, they, their whole image and just aesthetic of the whole release, it was screaming Dark Throne and, and Vlad Tepes and shit, which is generally not my fucking cup of metal. Again, like a little bit of that here and there, but it. You know, it's not like it looked like Once Upon the Cross. I'm like, all right, this is calling the dog. This is probably up the dog's alley. So I didn't give it a whole hell of a lot of chance. But um, no, I mean, and you do realize we've never released them, right? Because <laughs> you got to make sure you're not one of those guys. Hills put out Sarcophago Iron Right. Guys literally think this shit all the time. I'm like, we we talking about? We carry, oh my, we carry that product. We have this in stock or this shirt in stock or that LP. We didn't put it out, though. People think that goddamn shit, though. And I, I, I you might be one of them at this point. Because we've never worked with that Urge Hall ever. But I'm going to assume that you kind of met, do I have interest in doing it? Like, you know, some of the deceased and Christians and Divine Empires and shit like that that we did not work with, but we reissued as, a, as just fans. Um, nothing on the to-do list. Uh, I doubt Easy e cares about them either. And um, I don't know if Sea Dog does or not. I, I, I could see flipping a core. I could see him liking them and I could see him not giving a shit. I could see it both ways. Never asked him. Um, and they move, they, the band sells for us. So is it a band like as a smart business? It's not because it's obviously not embarrassing shit. It's Cavalt block model or true block model. I mean, I'm sure some of the idiots in the comments are their dark funeral block model too. Whatever. May, maybe they are. I don't know. Uh, to my knowledge, it was just block model that I didn't care about. I didn't think it was untrue or anything like that. So if a business opportunity was a rise and one of us liked it, I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't say, fuck no, they ain't signing that canoe ass shit. It wouldn't be that, but it never came up. And as far as me personally, I have no interest in working with them. But again, if something came up and it was like it made sense, I, I wouldn't be against it because not everything that we put out is something that I definitely want for myself, but it's got to be at least respectable is the way I fucking see it. So, uh, no, no plan to. Not not to my goddamn knowledge. Unless Chasey Boy's talking to the guy, which news to me. I never fucking heard that. So I want to get your hopes on that. So the answer is most likely no. Two, would you agree that Ishan... Betrayed black metal question mark. P.S. Last name spelled Rute. Uh, just saying, and yes, it is French. I'm from Quebec. So I was right about the French part, but I don't know if I'm still pronouncing it. R O. He puts in the parentheses R O U T I E H. Rute? Rute? I don't know. I'm still probably butchering it, bro, bro. Um, did Ishan betray black metal? I mean, <sighs> The thing is with these guys, dude, is did they betray it or were they ever into it to begin with? Because betrayed, like when you say that, I mean, is Ishan listening to any current black metal bands within the last 10 years? And again, I get it. He's older than me. But dog, he's heard it all, seen it all. I get that. But my, my question is, what was his cutoff then? Because if you're to ask him if he likes black metal, if he still does it all anymore, so he's not just some classic rock guy. He's he's gonna say the obvious shit. Venom, Bathory, Merciful Fate, Celtic Frost, all those with the exception of Bathory, you can you can argue, is that even actual black metal music? It's more like proto black metal. There's that. And then he might say his Norwegian buds, Mayhem, Burzum, Torgrop. That's even wants to give a shout out to that in the view. Like, and that's even if he actually did he actually like the music or is he just friends with them? Let's just say that's the extent. Let's say he mentions the Norwegian guys around the time the Emperor started and the uh, the proto stuff I mentioned, including Bathory. Is that really a black metal fan? Not really. I mean, because to be honest, like, okay, I could get it maybe if he's like, dude, I'm not checking out the new Grieve album or whatever that came out in 2023. I've heard it all, seen it all. I helped create the black metal. Okay, fine. But it's like, when Emperor was in its early roots and like putting out uh, in the night side eclipse and shit like that, let's say we're in 93, 94, you didn't like any of the black metal that was coming out at that time? I mean, how old were you then? Again, Max, 30 years old, that's younger than I am now. You were already burnt out. You heard it all, seen it all. But for fuck's sakes, the goddamn music was still in its infancy. I mean, black metal didn't become like an official, here's its sound of a sound today and so what who would what would you say is like the first other let's exclude bathory although i would say that's the first official black metal sound but realistically in the 80s 
who else is really fucking doing the black metal sound like that? It wasn't until bands like Mayhem and shit it came along. You know, then you had U.S. black metal, you Greek. But I mean, what was the next kind of like, okay, this is what black metal sounds. The, the whole guitar tone, the vocals, everything. It was in the 90s for sure. By then, when it was like, this is an established thing, you know, because even death metal in the 80s, it was kind of, for lack of better words, dicking around, finding its true form to what people call death, by the, the majority of the masses call death metal to this day. Let's let's call it like it is. It was kind of established by 1990, 91. There's a whole argument of the, the, the 85 and, you know, seven churches and Scream Bloody Gore, are those thrash albums, there's that argument. So it wasn't like a solidified this your death metal if you play like this till 9091 let's call it like the fuck is black metal is basically the same camp give or take a year or so I don't have to be a smart ass and pull out well death crush is this that's one off record and it's an ep and it, it, it's it wasn't definitely established so the music's in its very extreme infancy he's already burnt out dude what i honestly see again I, and i see this for all the scenes go Dude, look at all the fucking uh, countries and what they do. What? Okay, so in the 90s, what became popular? Black metal. Why? Because there was a few pioneers or whatever you were at the forefront that kind of blew up and got recognition that were black metal bands. So everybody else after that, let's start black metal. Mark Throne started off as a death metal band, then goes black metal. You don't think that's kind of a bit poserish in a sense? Or... Or you don't even want to call it posers because people get offended by that term almost. Copycats, not thinking for yourself, following trends. And I'm not just limiting to Norway. Look at Sweden. Look at all the fucking bands coming out of Sweden. Not all of them. And then same with uh, Norway. I mean, you'd have Cadaver or something that was that was outside the norm. But vast majority of them, Sweden, all wanted to sound like them too. Left hand path comes out. Holy shit, let's do this. Go to fucking uh, Brazil. More revisions is out. Do you ever notice all those sound very fucking similar? Volcano to fucking Sepultura to Sarcophago to uh, Mutilator to all those. You know, all those bands from the 80s? You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't notice they sound very similar? Why do you think that is? It's just guys kind of copying each other. And it really goes to show who is true as well. You can use Norway and uh, Sweden as, as prime examples. Because look at, look at the Swedish scene. Look at all the bands. How many bands stayed true to like playing actual sweetest sounding death metal? The bands that stuck around. Dismember. Crickets. Is there any others? It ain't a tune. It ain't grave. We'll grieve with it. Hating life, bra bra. We're, we're done. Then we're back. I mean, I guess they kind of play sweetest death metal now. Full disclosure, I haven't listened to the last five albums. The last thing I heard was that Into the Grave, Back to the Grave, which. You can tell they're going back to the roots. I'm like, this is just them trying to rehash what they're doing. Hating life and shit didn't work. So they're, we're back. Let's do what we were doing. But it was just kind of like a, kind of just a commercialized ver sounding version of what, of what of Into the Grave. I was like, all right, don't really need this. So never bother to check anything past. But I mean, even later, I was like, another reason it turned me off too. At covering Alice in Chains. What the fuck? Don't even want to like this. What are these fucking guys thinking? So I'd say Grave's not in there. And Tomb's definitely not in there. Unleashed is not in there. Some people stand up for some of those later Unleashed. Okay, fine. I mean, I've, I've heard Hell's Unleashed or whatever later on. It ain't a sweet as death mom. It's a metal album. I'm not saying it's it's fucking Limp Bizkit canoe fucking shit. I'm not saying that. But it's not a death metal record. They started off as a death metal band. Dismember was the only band that considered continued to do death metal. Out of all the bands that continued. Vesseltory, Swallow the Snake. And then they were done. We're back. Now they're playing death metal again because they got their asses fucking reamed. Why, why do you think that is? I, my personal opinion is all these band members, for the most part, they're just copying buds. They're a bunch of teenagers. They're highly uh, influenced on what their friends were into, what looked cool, what, what, what got the girls, what got the views, what got the fucking... <laughs> Just the attention, for lack of better words, and that's what they ran with. And I'm just using those two uh, locations, that, or the third location, one in Brazil, same scenario. But there's other locations that are just like that. Why do you think a lot of that slammy shit came out right after suffocation from New York? Why is most of it from New York? It's no coincidence. It's just guys copying off each other. So, 
And by definition, that's the true version of Poser. Their hearts weren't truly into it to begin with. Maybe they thought they were when they were young and full of energy and shit. But fuck me dead. And Doom didn't last long. They turned their back on that death metal. So is Ishan in that same category? He's got to be, dude. He, ha he has to be, dude. There's no way he actually likes black metal. Again, he best case scenario. This is best case scenario. He occasionally throws on the player every 12 to 18 months some of the albums he grew up on. He'll throw on some Welcome to Hell, Black Metal at War with Satan, first couple Bathories, maybe Sarkovko I or I, maybe fucking Death Crush because he was buds with them, maybe, maybe, maybe Day Mysterious Dom Satanas. Again, he was buddies and he wanted to Talk about how cool he was in that goddamn circle. That was around 93. That was pushing it years, years wise. It's been all over the goddamn place over here. Um, that's about it, dude. I mean, does he like denial of God? Does he like impiety? Does he like the ducks? Does he like enthroned? Any other fucking black metal? It go to the Greek scene, Rotting Christ, Barathron. Does he like fucking, uh, does he think Paul Lenny's a sack of shit? Fucking pro fanatic of Habahesh, complete fucking garbage. Does he like Satanus? They put their goddamn demo out in the fucking 80s. I mean, doubt it. I highly doubt it. I highly fucking doubt that he does. But Mr. Darkness and fucking evil, dude, it's all about this. It's the only reason he's doing it for. It's the only goddamn reason he's for it. He ain't got the fucking darkness and evil and the all Satanism. He just he just doesn't. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm just talking about him because you specifically asked about him. That's the majority of these guys, dude. Hellhammer, all of them, just all, all those fucking bands. I mean, you got fucking, who was it? Gall or the guy in Gorgoroth. He lives out in the fucking woods and just draws paintings and shit. He's not in the black model. Do I give a fuck? I don't I give two flying fucks what the guy does. Like, I, it's, not, it's not a matter of me caring. It's just me again. It, it's the equivalent of me taking up, uh, j Dog is going to be a rapper. Why am I going to be a rapper? I don't listen to rap. My question to these guys is, why do you play black metal? You don't like black metal. Well, pretty much by your own account, admitting it. There's only one reason. There's one goddamn reason. Money. That's it. That's the only reason. What else would the reason would you do it? If I was going to be a rapper and someone's like, hey, j Dog, you go do your rap, we're going to pay you a million dollars. Yeah, I probably would do it. Probably would do it. But yeah, I'll do this on a side project, keep this Kanusha in the fucking DL. I don't want this associated with my metal scene. But yeah, for a paycheck, I guess, because I don't like the shit. I don't like rap. And they'll go, well, they're artists. And like, Did they do art that you like, dude? Because you like some type of music. For example, Ishan. If he likes classic rock, if he's listening to Rush and fucking ZZ Top, which is probably what it is, play that kind of music then. Doesn't have to sound like those bands. Be an artist of that, of something that you like. That would make the most logical sense if I'm an artist, because I know that's what Gall or whatever the fuck his name is, said something dumb along those lines. Okay, but you're playing an art, a music art form that you don't like. It makes no fucking sense. So, do I care? No, but is the dog stupid and thinking they're they're the leaders of the black metal and calling the shots? I don't think that at all. Next goddamn paid fucking question. Edwin Stonebreaker. So glad I found your YouTube page because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Bet your ass it is. My question. I'm a huge Venom fan. Probably the biggest. Tall statement. You think you're the biggest Venom fan out in the world? Especially the first four albums. That's where it's our bra bra. That and Cast in Stone. God damn it. What are your thoughts on these bands splitting up and both sides using the Venom name but adding the ink to the one? <laughs> I could talk about that for a second. I mean, I don't... I'll get to that. Why not come up with a whole new band with, with new name and so on? Looking forward to ordering a shitload of stuff from you from Ed Stonebreaker. Like the ordering a shitload of stuff, uh... Remark, bra bra. Um, as far as the Venom Inc., let's call it like it is. Why they do it? So they're not going to change their name because outside that, if they do Mantis and Abaddon, which was those two, <laughs> at least originally, nobody cares. That's why nobody will fucking care. So they got to carry that on so they can play fucking the old songs. You go see them live, which I did six years ago, and don't be wrong, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was going to be a shit show. They played all oldies, golden oldies. I thought Demolition Man did a pretty good job. Granted, the Demolition Man albums, I recall. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I just assume no Kronos, no go. Um, but he did a good job. Hit the bill. <laughs> last time, this last tour they just did, they're coming through Cleveland. I'm like, dogs going as I hopefully get an interview with Mantis. I hear day of, 
No man says, well, Abaddon's out. From what I heard, he knocked up some fucking chick and his wife found out and kicked him the goddamn curb. Don't know if that's true or not. That's a story I was goddamn told. Um, so there's no Abaddon. Yeah, he was the only one I met, too, by the way. I met him uh, when they played here, whatever it was, six years ago with Midnight and Satan, I think. I think that was the package. No, I saw him. Thought it was good. Um, got to meet Abaddon. Mantis was, I don't know, in, back, in the back room getting blowjobs, doing whatever. Uh, didn't get to meet him. This is before the channel. But now that I was doing the channel, I'm like, all right, well, Abaddon's out. Would have been nice to get them both. Let's get me Mantis. There's no Mantis. I'm like, okay, well, let me get this straight. There's no Mantis now, and there's no Abaddon. We know there's no Abaddon. He's, he's busy fucking with Titty Girl. What? This is a fucking full-blown cover. This is literally a full-blown cover band. Why the fuck would I go see that? So I didn't. Now, what I think they need to do, dude, there's a thing called business and personal. The three of them just need to get their heads out of their dumb asses, kiss and make up. I, what are they even bitching about? Because yeah, obviously obviously, there's some beef with Kronos and them. What it is, I don't even know what it is. I've never actually heard of one. I'd be kind of curious if you know. Put the, put the scuttle button in the comments. Maybe we'll get that conversation going if it's anything goddamn juicy and something to talk about. Um, dude, it's just, it, but it's like Glenn, uh, Glenn, Danzig, Dan, Glenn Danzig and the fucking Misfits. For years, they weren't doing anything. It was obvious. Dude, just give the people what they want. Kiss and make up. Who gives a shit? You don't have to like each other. Just ignore each other. You're on your big tour buses anyways. Hell, you probably got separate buses in this room. It's not like, it's not like you're fucking nunslaughter going on the road and you're and it's like, okay, well, we get a room for for four guys and all sharing a room. You're bunking. No, they get their own rooms. Just don't even deal with each other. Just go on, treat it like an employee, and just you know you say hi and you got to put on the smiley face for the seconds you're around them, just to put on the show, give them what they want. That's what. That's what they need to do. Do real them. Do the three original. I mean, for fuck's sakes, what are you bitching about? I mean, even the one guy fucked the other guy's wife. Okay, well, it's, that is something to be pissed off about. But, dude, that's water in the bridge. At this point, make your moolah. Get the three original members. That's what people want to see. Don't talk to the other guys. You don't have to send them fucking goddamn birthday cards or goddamn Christmas cards or anything like that. Like, again, it, 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 assuming you're on the same goddamn bus, even, it's, a, it's one of those nice, cozy-ass fucking cozy buses. You're not in one of those little vans snuggled up next to another fucking man riding to, to, uh, city to city with each other. So it's not like that. You can make it work. It's like, cut the bitch shit. Man up. Swallow your goddamn pride and just fucking, just, just fucking do it. Do everything under Venom. The three original guys. The three guys people want to see. Not these fucking ham and eggers. That's what I think they should do. You see, fucking uh, Glenn finally got that stick out of his fucking ass, and he did it with the Misfits. But then when they did that first tour, they never came through Cleveland. But holy fuck, I got wind. But what I heard, what I, you know, because it was a, the closest show was in Jersey or something, I was considering going. Tickets were like, now I had to got misinformation, but people were like, that's what it was. And I'm like, but then I, I don't know. It, I was like, this can't, can't be right. Thousand dollar tickets. I'm like, I'm not going to no thousand dollar ticket show. Who the fuck these guys think they are? Well, dog, that was only for front row seats. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. That was the price I was fucking told. I was like, there's got to be. It. And to be honest, I'm not going to be going to binocular shows anyways. If there was if there was $50 tickets, but it's literally fucking grab your cotton binoculars, I'm not interested in that. You, you're better off just watching that shit on YouTube. But that's the goddamn case. But nonetheless, they figured it out. Doyle um, only and and uh, dancing, and then whoever the fuck they had on drums. I don't know what the, who they used. Um. That's what people want to see, man. Then on the same goddamn thing. And the only reason you guys are still doing music and going on the road, again, let's call it like it is. And I can't say I'm blaming them. Motherfuckers are in their 60s and have been doing this shit. But out literally the first four albums, can't we four I was born. I mean, uh, yeah, I think that one was Satan was sweet year. Yeah, I think that was 84, right? They had four, four fucking full lengths before I was born. Kudos to them. Totally get it. Do it just for a paycheck. Make money. You're legends. I get it. Fine. Whatever. But that's the only reason you're doing it anyway. So just fucking just, just make a smart business decision. Give them the goddamn bro hug and just just settle the fuck up. All this other dumbass shit, it's, it's, it's fucking stupid. I mean, they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot is what they're fucking doing. So that's on them. I don't really care. But uh, I, as, as a businessman myself, I think it's fucking stupid. So whatever. Do what the fuck you want. Come switch to the surgeon. Look at you. Look at the outbox. Get in. It's morning. Later, goddammit.